Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was raised for us, be with you all. And with your spirit. Christ, our hope is risen. Let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have won the victory over death. Christ Jesus, you are the joy of all who believe. Lord Jesus, in you we are reborn. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of the day. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, This is the day, Lord God, that you have made, raising Christ from the dead and raising us with Christ. You have fashioned for yourself a new people, washed in the flood of baptism, sealed with the gift of the Spirit, invited to the banquet of the Lamb. In the beauty of this Easter morning, set our minds on the new life to which you have called us, Place on our lips the words of witness for which you have anointed us and ready our hearts to celebrate the festival with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We ask this through your Son, the Christ, our Passover and peace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever 
and ever. Amen. 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 The Apostle Peter was originally skeptical about preaching the gospel to non-Jews, but one day the Holy Spirit summoned Peter to preach to a Gentile, the pagan army officer Cornelius and his household. Today's passage is a portion of Peter's sermon which summarizes the life and ministry of Jesus. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began speaking to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. to the Colossians depicts Christ as the only mediator between God and the world. A previous passage of the letter presented baptism as the way we are united with Christ. The author will today remind us of the heights to which Christ has raised us and then call upon us to live up to this. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. 
If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer now your thankful praise. A lamb the sheep redeeming, sinless in the sinner's head, reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that strange and awesome strife. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Mary, speak, declare to us what you saw while on your The Lord be with you and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, and she saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, 
and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. For many years now, it's been our tradition on the fourth Sunday of Advent to pray a blessing on the expectant mothers of the parish. What always strikes me about this moment is that on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we are mere days away from Christmas. But for these mothers, Advent continues. Their Advent only ends when their child is born. In the springtime, the church calls us to another Advent. It's longer by two weeks. We call this Lent. The 40 days of Lent are also a time of waiting. Something new is being gestated in us so that when we arrive at Easter, we'll be ready to respond to the call of the risen Lord to come out of our tombs. Except that this Easter, our Lenten desert is not ended. We are still isolated in our homes, required to shelter in place, likely for several more weeks. As Pope Francis reflected in his Urbi at Orbi address to the world a few weeks ago, for weeks now, it has been evening. Thick darkness has covered over our squares, our streets, and our cities. It has taken over our lives. And here's where the Gospel of John begins. In this very moment, while it was still dark, John is taking us back to the very beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. Darkness was over the face of the deep. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. John O'Donoghue, the late Celtic poet, reminds us that we're always on a journey from darkness to light. At first, we are children of the darkness. Your body and your face were formed first in the kind darkness of your mother's womb. Your birth was a first journey from darkness into light. When the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, they were growing so numerous that Pharaoh ordered that all the baby boys should be drowned, thrown into the river. The contemporary Jewish scholar, Aviva Zornberg, the daughter of a rabbi, writes, when Moses, the redeemer, is born and grows too big to hide, his mother places him in the very river of Pharaoh's decree. He's not submerged but is floated on the top of the river of death and life in a closed box, well sealed with bitumen and pitch, the very materials of slavery. In this floating brick, Moses is found by another woman, the Egyptian princess, who opens the box, sees him crying, and takes pity on him. That is, from the rigid brick shape emerges a raucous, precocious cry of life and of suffering. Perhaps, suggests one midrash, the cry of a suffocating nation. She sees the uncanny force of the baby, and she is credited at this moment with seeing the Shekinah, the divine presence. Her vision births the child from death to life. Before he led the children of Israel through the waters of the sea, Moses had himself already 
made this journey from death to life. Moses now has two mothers, his Hebrew mother and Pharaoh's daughter, who takes him into the palace and raises him as her own son. In a similar way, the children of Israel have two mothers. They are brought to birth a second time by the God who births them through the waters of the sea. No sooner had Pharaoh let the children of Israel go than he changed his mind and began to pursue them. With the dark waters in front of them and Pharaoh's army at their backs, God opened up a way where there was no way, and the Jewish people walked dry-shod through the sea. The Egyptians pursued them, only to perish as the ocean waves came crashing down upon them. At this climactic moment, God has utterly proven himself. Their tormentors have been punished. All their pain and suffering has been washed away by the waters of the Red Sea, and they're able to find the words to sing with pure faith and joy. But there's another way to read this story. In her essay on the narrative, Zornberg suggests that, in fact, the Jewish people did not sing after having emerged victorious from the Red Sea. Instead, they sang while still marching through its waters, pursued by Pharaoh's army. If this is indeed the case, then the song of the sea cannot be understood as a song of pure joy and triumph, but rather a song fraught with tension. The Jewish people must sing in full view of their oppressors. They must sing while their future is uncertain, wondering whether they will indeed make it to the other side. The song does not deny their pain, Instead, they must find the strength to sing while still bearing the psychological wounds of slavery. Under these circumstances, the song of the sea must embody the complex reality of joy and pain living side by side. This is the song we sing today. As St. Paul reminds us, your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. On Holy Saturday, the church gathers in the dark to sing, O night of endless wonder, night of bliss, when every living creature held its breath, as Christ robbed death and harrowed hopeless hell, restoring life to all those in the tomb. O night that gave us back what we had lost, O night that made our sin a happy fault, beyond our deepest dreams this night, O God, your hand reached out to raise us up in Christ. While it is still dark, we make our way to the tomb. Like the disciples before us, we do not yet understand what God is doing. But sometimes, as Rachel Held Evans reminds us, just showing up, burial spices in hand, is all it takes to witness a miracle. On the day of our baptism, the community of faith spoke words of faith and promise for us that we might walk always as children of the light. And so on this Easter day, we profess together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this day, the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad as we pray to the God who raised Jesus from the dead. For the church, that we may radiate the light of Christ each day and confidently live as daughters and sons of God. find themselves walking in darkness or doubting their faith, that they may encounter the risen Lord who brings light to their journey and the peace of God's love. in health care, public safety, and other essential services, that God will protect them and their families as they serve the greater good. For all who are grieving, that God will give them peace and hope as they hear the good news of Christ's resurrection. That the sick will know the healing light of Christ, especially Phil Dean, Craig Crafton, Tim Swanson, Mary Basomi Neen, Keith Kramar, Cameron Costas, Tom Needham, Catherine Wantuck, and those whose names you would like to mention now. died, particularly those who died from COVID-19, that Christ may welcome them into the eternal light and joy of God's presence, especially Sarah Ploss, Angeline Brownell, Patricia Turner, Timothy McDonald. God, our Father, in the person of Jesus Christ, you have begun a new creation. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, may all the children of the church proclaim the ever new gospel of your love for us. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
Every good gift comes from above. In return, we've brought gifts of bread and wine and placed them here on the altar. So now we place our lives on the altar as well. Our joys and hopes, our grief and anguish, and pray that the sacrifice we offer together may be acceptable to God, who is Father of us all. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, that we should always sing your glory.
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, new world where the fullness 
source of your peace will be revealed. Gather people of every race, language, and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet. Through Jesus Christ, Because in Christ we have received the spirit of adoption, as sons and daughters of God, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, after your resurrection from the dead, despite the locked doors, you entered into the room where the disciples were gathered, and your gift to them was your gift of peace. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And with, with your, your spirit. Alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been slain. Therefore, let us keep the festival. Blessed are we who come to share in the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you 
should enter enter under under my my roof, roof, but only say the word, and and my soul soul shall shall be healed.
mercy, true light. With you, O Lord, is life in all its fullness and in your light. We shall see true light. Let us pray. Father of love, watch over your church and bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised by this Easter sacrament. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen. We always end our Easter liturgies with the blessing of the Easter food baskets. Uh, if you have them ready, go ahead and bring them in front of your screen and we'll bless them. If you're not ready, you can just rewind the video and and play the blessing later. God of glory, the eyes of all turn to you as we celebrate Christ's victory over sin and death. Bless us in this food of our first Easter meal. May we who gather at the Lord's table continue to celebrate the joy of Christ's resurrection and be admitted finally to his heavenly banquet. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I hope all of you are uh, as creative in being together as, uh, as we all are while not being able to be together. There was a group in the parish that uh, usually celebrates a Seder supper on, uh, during Holy Week. Um, they did it this year via Zoom. I didn't attend, but I did get some of the lamb, and it was very good. Uh, this week I had a very unusual experience, a, a woman... Uh, from the nursing home, died. I've known her for many years. She was not yet 50, and her family couldn't have a funeral, but I met with a small group in the parking lot of the funeral home to bless the casket in the funeral coach. The family brought flowers from Costco, but they lamented that they couldn't bring a funeral pall. Well, I told them that actually I think we're the, only we Americans are the ones who use a funeral pall. If you remember the funeral of St. John Paul II, they put the gospel book on his casket. And in France, they put flowers on the casket. I think they've started a new tradition. In my homily today, I reflected on the children of Israel being born again in the waters of the Red Sea. But you remember, it took them 40 years to cut the umbilical cord and live as adults in the land of promise. My nephew Matt posted a meme on Facebook, although I don't know how he remembers this. But as a reminder of what this social distancing would have been like 18 years ago, you would have been stuck at home with a Nokia 3310 with 300 texts, 100 call minutes limit, and dial-up internet. Bow your heads now as we pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter and protect you against all sin. Let the church say amen. 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 Through the resurrection of his son, God has granted us healing. May God fulfill the promises and bless you with eternal life. Let the church say amen. 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 You have mourned for Christ's sufferings. Now you celebrate the joy of Christ's resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Let the church say amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The Mass continues, go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.